Good morning everyone, Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of morning prayer here at New Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. And I was here two weeks ago, we lit the second Advent candle, I don't know where all that time's gone since then but we're just five days now to Christmas Day, the light's increasing so I'm going to invite Lindsay, Chris Ella and Lily to light our fourth advent candle now. Thank you. Remember Mary and Joseph, they, uh, they did what God told them to do, even though it was difficult. They cared for Jesus from the moment he was born, and they loved and looked after him when he was a child. Now it is our turn to make a place for Jesus in our lives. God of the humble, thank you for Mary and Joseph, who did what you asked and welcomed Jesus into their home. God of joy, help us to make time for Jesus in our lives. Come Lord Jesus, come. Thank you very much. So as in past weeks, if we remain seated throughout the service, apart from when we say the creed together, I'll invite you to stand. So we turn to our opening prayer. Let us pray. God of signs and wonders, stars and angels, heaven touching earth and the divine entering human flesh, be the peace among us and the hope within us that we might become your holy people in this and every place where you might take us. Amen. God, the maker, Jesus, the storyteller, Holy Spirit of life, in Advent we wait for you. God of justice, Jesus of Bethlehem, Holy Spirit of hope, in Advent we cry to you. You, God, are our love, our warmth, and our light. In Advent, we long for you. And we pray the collect prayer together for this fourth Sunday in Advent. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Advent is a time to reflect on our lives. We not only look at the good things we have done, but also the not so good. And as we continue in Advent, let us be aware of the things that are burdening us. And if we go on with this heavy load, it makes the going much more difficult. So let us reflect now on the things that we would like to put down, the burdens we would like to lay down and ask God for forgiveness. We'll just have a few moments of quiet to think about that. For the things we regret saying or doing, take my burden, Lord, and forgive me. 
for the things we meant to do but never got round to. Take my virgin Lord and forgive me. For the moments when we were greedy or wasteful. Take my virgin Lord and forgive me. For the times when we didn't tell the truth. Take my virgin Lord and forgive me. May God forgive us, lift our burdens from us and renew us, that as we journey in Advent, we live our lives freely and more lightly. Amen. And knowing that we're forgiven, we offer our Advent thanks and praise. This Advent time, we remember Mary and Joseph giving thanks for their faithfulness, courage and obedience stepping out into the unknown in the strength of your spirit, playing their part in the fulfilment of your plan to bring a prodigal people home again. May their example be the pattern of our lives. And when we hear your gentle whisper, Lord, grant us courage to step out on our journey with you. Amen. So Alan is going to read the Gospel to us now. The Gospel reading is taken from St Luke, chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, Father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is God's word to us. Do I look like a fool? I might not be the shiniest nail in the box, but that doesn't mean I deserve to be treated like an idiot. That's what I felt like she'd done. Mary, my intended, she told me she was pregnant. I laughed when she first said it. It would be typical of her jokes, but from the look on her face, fierce, determined, scared, I saw this was no joke. I stared at her and I couldn't speak. I saw that she thought I might harm her. That's what made me angry, that she could think that of me. I wanted to get out. I wanted to shout. I kicked a chair across the room. Mary stood her ground. I felt ashamed to lose my temper like that. I breathed deep and said, Who's the father? God, she said. I laughed again. A sneer, really. I didn't deserve to be insulted. I walked towards the door. I'd drop her, release the obligation. It was more than she deserved. Joseph, she said. Just one word, Joseph. It wasn't pleading. It wasn't full of tears. 
There was no fear. It was gentle. It had authority. It was her voice, but it was not her voice. It was a voice that knew me. That was more intimate than a whisper in my ear. It was a voice, impossible though it sounds, that knew my body better than I could. It was the, that voice that stopped me. It was that voice that told me I should try to trust her. It was that voice that helped me to say yes to her, to God. Don't be afraid, he said, as though angels popping up out of the blue are to a penny, no cause for concern. Well, I'm sorry, but I was petrified, caught between the urge to run and scream. And when he started on about being favoured by God, blessed among women, it only made things worse. Who was I to be singled out? I to be chosen? And nobody like me from Nazareth. Whoever this guy was, he'd come to the wrong house. And the sooner he was gone, the better. But he didn't go, and somehow, despite myself, I listened. My amazement growing by the second as he talked of a child I would bear. A saviour who would rule over the house of David, and whose kingdom would never end. How can this be, I asked. For a start, I'm still a virgin. But he wasn't finished yet, not by a long way. This child he spoke of, to be not just my son, but God too, conceived by his spirit. Well, if I was troubled before, I had more reason to be then. For this was mind-blowing stuff, certain to turn the world upside down and change my life forever. Yet somehow I suddenly felt strangely calm, happy to accept whatever was asked of me, no questions asked. Why? Because if God was really speaking and could actually use someone as ordinary as me, then surely nothing was beyond him, however impossible it might seem. The future was in his hands, not mine, and what better place could there be to leave it? Thank you to Alan, Steve and Anne for reading. Thank you. May the words that I speak and the thoughts of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, Lord, our strength and saviour. Amen. Today, the Sunday morning before Christmas is traditionally our nativity service here at New Church, which sadly we've not been able to have today because of the restrictions. However, we're reminded in the gospel reading of what is often the first scene in a nativity play. God has sent the angel Gabriel to give Mary the message that she will be the mother of Jesus. And with such a familiar Bible passage that we hear each year, sometimes it's easy to, to skip over it. We've heard it, we know the words, we know what it means. So that's why I asked Steve and Anne to read to us today. I imagine you gathered that those were the voices of Joseph and Mary. And hearing from the characters inside the story sometimes helps us just to hear the story afresh. Joseph wasn't mentioned in the Gospel reading, but we heard in that monologue, let it, he let us know how he felt about the news of his fiancée announcing that she was pregnant through God's spirit. And then Mary explained uh, her own thoughts and feelings. And it certainly brought the story alive for me again during the week when I was preparing for today. And I noticed several important things. Mary and Joseph seemed to be very young and it was such a huge thing that God was asking them to do, imagine. And they must have been so frightened and culture at that time wouldn't allow um, a child to be born outside of marriage. There would have been severe consequences. It would have been very risky to continue. They would have known that. Mary and Joseph were just ordinary. Mary said it herself. And they understood some of those amazing things that God was asking them to do, but they still had that doubt and those questions. They weren't fully sure who could be. But the, despite the unknowns and the difficulties, they readily said yes 
to God, for Mary to be the mother of Jesus and Joseph, to stand by her and for them to get married. And I also noticed they felt this sense of calm as they said yes to God. God made that announcement to Mary through an angel and he still makes announcements to us today. Each one of us is special to God, even if we may just feel small and ordinary, each one of us is special to him. And God's got much ordinary business for us to carry out. And he gives each of us a unique gift, a unique call to use those gifts in many ways. Sometimes God identifies us for a particular task or function. It could be through care with our family and friends, through school, work, volunteering, through our retirement or hobbies and in many more ways. But we have to be alert and be willing and ready to hear those announcements, to watch out for them. And God often needs to nudge us in the right direction. These pre-announcements could take many forms, I'm sure we've all experienced them. It could be an answer to prayer perhaps, a sign, a voice, or by being in a special spiritual place for us that means something personally. Even if it's difficult, frightening and risky and something we don't understand, God wants us to say yes to his call and requests and to feel at peace when we do, just like Mary and Joseph. There may be something that we're thinking about at this moment, a particular situation that we feel God speaking to us about. And if we need to find that courage and strength to face that and to make a decision, maybe even say yes to God. We can remember this story of Mary and Joseph today, which should help and encourage us. And Bill's going to play some quiet music for us now to reflect on what this story means for us today. Amen.
response to the gospel and our reflections, I invite you now to stand if it's comfortable to do so as we say what we believe together in the words of the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took on our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in him? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? Do you believe and trust in him? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And could you sit, please, as we pray together? And the response for our prayers today is partway down page three of your service sheet. When I say, Lord of our Advent journey, the response is, hear our prayer. And our prayers today are based on the Gospel reading and also on what we call Mary's prayer or song, which we find later on in Luke's Gospel, her response to God when she was asked to be the mother of Jesus. So let us pray. Lord God, we join our prayers to those of Mary, your faithful servant and mother of Jesus. We proclaim your greatness and sing in gratitude for all your wonderful gifts given so generously to us. And Lord, we pray, look down with love upon our churches in our villages, especially our churches here at New Church and Christ Church. Be with us as we focus on the coming of your kingdom and the gift of your son, Jesus, this Christmas. Lord of our Advent journey, hear our prayer. Mary prayed that the mighty be cast down from their thrones. We pray that those in power would use that power wisely and compassionately so that the lowly are lifted up and the hungry fed and greater equality be established between the wealthy and the poor. And we especially pray that all people across the whole world be given access to the new corona virus vaccine, whatever their situation, their age or gender or money situation. And we give thanks and pray for all those who tirelessly run our food banks, especially at this time of great need. Lord of our Advent journey, Mary's prayer or Mary's song was given from, God, from her to God whilst on a visit to her cousin Elizabeth to her family. At this time of Advent and Christmas, we pray for all who may be travelling and meeting up on Christmas Day. We pray for common sense and protection and safety. And we remember today, perhaps those amongst us, those we know and love who are greatly disappointed by the change, having to make changes in their Christmas plans at short notice. That they're different to what they may have hoped. Just pray that you are with them, Lord, that they may find ways to celebrate Christmas and to be in touch with family, perhaps at a distance, but still giving that love and care. We pray for all our friends and families for the love and care always. We pray for your presence with them. Lord of our Advent journey, hear our prayer. 
Mary recognised your promise of mercy and grace. Lord, we ask you to show your mercy and grace on all who are ill, body, mind or spirit, those who may be fearful or in mourning. We especially pray for those we know ourselves on our own hearts. We just have a quiet moment to remember them. We pray for those in our churches who've asked to be named in our prayers. We pray for Annick Platt, Daphne Eastburn, Kath Eckersley, Eileen Nolan, Peter Hodgkinson, Wendy Keating, Joan Rimmer, Craig Barton, and Margaret Ballantyne, Nina Norton, Val Shillito, Mandy Mills, Chris Macro, Marcia Cooper, Chris Rigby and Chris Wells, Kelvin Hyam, Lucy Wrench, Dorothy Southern, Stephen Chadwick, Frank Highland, James Shillito and Margaret Crook. We also remember the residents of Holcroft Grange at this time in our parish. Lord of our Advent journey. Yeah, okay. Heavenly Father, you sent to earth the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, that in your power and love we might also have the gift of eternal life. We ask you to bless those whom we love that have departed this life with the gifts of your all-encompassing love and life eternal. We have a quiet moment to remember our loved ones at this time. We also remember those who've recently died in our parishes, Jeff Shelley, and also David Evans, whose ashes were interred this weekend. We remember their family and friends who are mourning their loss. We remember in our prayers also the family and friends of those whose anniversaries fall at this time. June Boardman, Caroline Cooper, Peter Blinkhorn, Ashton Roper Cummerson and Frank Taylor. Lord of our Advent journey, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us with your grace that in all things we may embrace your holy will and with Mary rejoice in your salvation. Send us out to finish our Advent journey filled with love, peace and hope, ready to receive that promise afresh into our lives. Amen. And we close our time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Just before I ask Alan to give the notices, I'd like to read out a message from the Church of England that came up on 
their Facebook page this morning. Some of you may have seen it. So if you just bear with me a moment, I just need to find it on my phone. I've saved it in my uh, directory. And this message is from Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Sarah Mullally, the Bishop of London. And it's in response to the news last night that um, was announced the government changes in our Christmas uh, activities and restrictions. The news of fresh restrictions in many areas will be a bl bitter blow, they said. For many people, it will mean spending Christmas Day alone. None of us has experienced a situation quite like it in our lifetimes. We note the rise in infections and hospitalizations with real concern. But we also know that there is real hope. We are nearer the end of this than the beginning, with a vaccine already being made available and treatments improving. And I think this message is a message of hope. It's not to diminish the difficulties that people have faced so far and will have a few difficult months ahead, but I do believe personally that it, there is a real hope. Um, some of you know I work for the NHS as a hospital chaplain. I, I don't work at Warrington, I work in Greater Manchester and the vaccine is starting to be rolled out. I, I had it on Friday morning and apart from a bit of a sore arm, I, I feel absolutely fine and I know personally some people in our villages have already received a letter of invitation to go for the vaccine over at the Halliwell Jones. Uh, I think it's the over 80s and vulnerable at the moment, but hopefully it won't be too long be before we all receive that invitation. So I hope that's a helpful message. I found it quite helpful this morning to, to think that we're getting further along. There's some hope and light rather than looking back. So I invite Alan now to read the notices for us. Thank you. Uh, first of all, services this week. Christmas Eve is on Thursday and please you need to book a ticket with me or a place for a ticket with me and the same for Christmas Day at 10.30 so 11.30 first communion of Christmas Christmas Eve and 10.30 Christmas Day morning then the family communion um, the Christmas Day service is booking up faster than the evening one so if you want to get a ticket, please come and see me soon or get in contact. Um, there will be a service next Sunday. So if you're lucky, you can come Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, have a day off on Boxing Day and come on the Sunday. Three out of four ain't bad, is it? Right. So uh, the, there won't be booking tickets for the Sunday service. Right. There is also a very special service this year we normally have a crib service normally have two crib services because they're so popular on christmas eve obviously we're not allowed to have that this time in its form but i can assure you that there will be a filmed uh, crib service and rupert has already got it in the can uh, when will it be available for from this evening, from this evening. oh right so uh, if you tune in to whichever of the, <laughs> look on the website, it tells you all of it there. And then poke various things on computers and phones and you'll be able to see the crib service. It's a different version and the people who took part greatly enjoyed it, I think. There's several people nodding their heads, good. <laughs> Nobody shaking theirs, well done. So thank you very much for those people who are involved. Thank you as well for all the people who sent in toys for the toy appeal. We had 114 different toys, which is roughly the same amount we had last year. Uh, when you consider the opportunities for giving them this year were 
rather less. So I'm very, very pleased. And so were the people at the Orford Neighbourhood Hub. So that was good. We took them there on Tuesday. So that was fun. Now, you still have noticed that we've got the Christmas trees. They will be with us until January the 4th. Um, no festival this year, but you can look at them <laughs> different times. If you want to look round the trees today, could you, to <laughs> sort out any traffic uh, problems, can you go out of church and then come back in and then uh, look at them, please? Um, Suzanne's asked me to mention especially the memory tree and the children's one at the front where you can have an interactive experience with the tree. Well, you can write a message anyway on for memory tree and put things down. So uh, please take advantage of that. And we won't even mind if as an adult you go to the children's tree and end up with a package of crayons. Right. So that's that. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. No doubt somebody will tell me if there is. Well, there is one thing. Thanks, Bill, for your playing. Uh, it was a very reflective piece of music, and I certainly reflected on um, the nicer things in life. Like that lad who used to deliver bread. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so... <laughs> there we go and other things as well but we do appreciate the music that you've su uh, supplied to us during our services since the lockdown came so let's give Bill a round of applause thank you And thank you, Alan, for the notices. So we're coming to the end of our service now. And as we go out into the week as God's people, we go with God's encouragement and blessing. So our closing responses. In our watching and our waiting, come, Lord Jesus. In our hopes and in our fears, come, Lord Jesus. In our homes and in our world, come, Lord Jesus. Come, bless us and surprise us. During the coming Christmas season, may we be blessed with the spirit of the season, which is peace, the gladness of the season, which is hope, and the heart of the season, which is love. Amen. So let us go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect in God's glory. In the name of Christ, Amen.